chaplaincy service offers to people uh, listening here quite often um, because when patients arrive at the hospice it, they're really engaged in, in a journey through, through their lives and quite often uh, it can be that they're near the end of that, that journey and somebody that will actually stay with them and listen in, uh, in a particular way can be really, really helpful to people I've found. I remember when we arrived at the hospice was really that sort of the first time that, uh, that I knew anything about sort of the chaplaincy service. It's not something, even the hospice, it's not something that I was aware of and what sort of services they provided. Um, and I remember when we first arrived, Paul the chaplain came over to us and introduced himself straight away and it became, you know, immediately within an hour we had somebody to speak to that, that we knew and felt comfortable around and, and could chat to. And that really was sort of straight away as we arrived and, and all the family felt welcomed. Uh, Paul talked to everybody individually, I think, and uh, I remember just thinking what, you know, what a friendly guy he was and, and, and that we would definitely, you know, be able to chat to him about anything if we wanted to. What he was going through when I met him here at the hospice was something that I just couldn't contemplate. That is the, the impending death of his mother. Um, he'd seen his mother diminish in lots of ways and in many senses she wasn't able to respond to him in the way that she had done throughout his life. He was clearly struggling uh, as I would be and often our conversations were very simple, very basic um, sometimes over a coffee in the uh, coffee lounge there. And I think the word presence springs to mind when thinking about what was special about the relationship. That at the times when he needed somebody just to be around, he found in the chaplain a presence uh, to enable him to, to be who he was, to express how he felt, to laugh if he wanted to laugh, and to cry if he wanted to cry. For, I mean, for myself, I'm, you know, I don't have any strong religious beliefs or anything. Um, so for, so from my point of view, Paul was, was a close friend, really, at the hospice. He was, irrespective of your faith or beliefs, Paul is Paul, and he'll chat to you and, and talk about absolutely anything, offer you advice. He's always got the time to sit and talk to you and listen to you and, and, and understand what you're saying and, and how you're feeling. Everybody's got a spirituality. Um, that's about what makes life worth living for them, what brings meaning and purpose to it. And for some people that is couched in religious terms, in a religious belief. Um, some people do have a religious faith and obviously I'm happy to, to help them to explore that. Uh, but for many people they don't express their spirituality in the context of a religious faith but simply want to be meeting someone on a um, one human being to another human being basis if that makes sense. I discovered that um, being alongside people whose situation I can't change because awful things are happening to either themselves or to the people that are close to them. But what I can do is try and make that experience as bearable as, as it can be. And that's presence again, I think. Um, I don't pretend that we can make poorly people better but what we can do is make their experience not just bearable, but actually profitable and worthwhile.